Mm. Well, it was heartwarming to see how queers of color came out and said, I've never seen you know myself mm. on television before. Um, but it was also, there was, <laughs> there was a taco moment. Oh, yeah. Um, and we did oh, not yeah. know that how you eat a taco was going to be, like, cause such a polemic. And that was surprising. Like, threads and threads of how am I ate her taco. Which, in, in actuality, it was, there was a lot you discover even on the day that you're not, like, sure, like, whatever. But it worked well because, essentially, she doesn't connect with her her it was um, all a choice yeah but it was yeah. it was just funny that it was like such a thing even the Valentina oh. people were like Valentina doesn't go on a taco and it's like if it does if you put it on a taco <laughs> and if that's like what you like yeah and so we dealt with it this season we're dealing yeah. with that because I was like really really this taco is the pro not the all the sex that you yeah. have all <laughs> the stuff. it's this okay so we dealt we're dealing with it this this season you are you're gonna address the taco issue yes <laughs> the taco taco gate taco gate <laughs> whoa I see you I see you trying to Columbus our shit but Bidia don't need discovering our right because Bidia's been here we're just here for the food that way you can hack that shit out of it and then no one around you can oh what do you think they're shooting anymore? seriously it's all good oh it's, seriously it's, it's all not good. all good you Barbie Parker bitch the first season was an intro to the world, right? It was uh, like a probadita, like mm -hmm. a taste. Look at these characters, look at the world. Now you know the world, now they can get going. Now they're, they're sort of the goals they set out in the finale of the first season, they, 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 we watch them in action. So it feels like this is, that was the intro and now we're really going with them. You know, and we get 10, we get five hours. So that's like a luxury and... Uh, we get to like talk about themes that I'm so excited. We get to talk about like um, colorism and mm -hmm. these queer conversations about queerness that I've never seen, seen on television, not just uh, queers of color, you know? that That's super exciting. And then just the imagery that we get to mm -hmm. like yeah. in, in 208, all the oh, like, the, and then the, the, the queer vaquero wedding that we get, vaquero means cowboy, and it's like this like, I've never seen that imagery, you know? and. Um, and that's exciting. And it's been exciting because to get such multi-dimensional, dimensional, fleshy, well-crafted characters um, that I think we saw in season one, and then in season two, really getting to peel apart even the layers on those layers and and digging into those crevices of just personality and self. It's it's such a privilege as an actor to be able to to dig into that because you're reading these scripts and you're crying and laughing while you're reading them as you're getting them and you're discovering so much about the characters so it's it's really special and the world it's fun to pull the rug mm -hmm. out from under them and now we have the space and the time mm -hmm. you know to really get to know them and see that oh well emma would react this way no actually no emma would not and that's exciting because now we have the space well we we set her up season one and now you know she gets to she comes back yeah <laughs> you don't even know the drama that's gonna go down so much sexy, so much crazy, you're not gonna be able to handle it. Mind blowing. You're not gonna wanna miss us. That was something that stressed me out for season two. I was like, how do I top that scene in 103? And, did I, and I, then we just took that away in the writer's room. Let's just stay true to you know, the moments and the storylines um, that they would be living. So we didn't, it, it, that, that's in, in uh, 103, that sex scene was so workshopped in the room because we wanted to get it right, you know? And now we're just letting them be. So we have all sorts of sexual situations, stuff that goes wrong, stuff that goes, stuff where she's in charge, stuff where she's not in charge. Like that, that we we get to see it in, uh, you know, in real life. And that's what's what's amazing seeing these women uh, still have having come so far, and then still going further and still having so much further to go and discovering things about themselves which we hopefully as women spend the rest of our lives trying to do is just constantly evolving and growing and we're getting to see the characters do that and sometimes it's badly a lot of times it's badly <laughs> but they're trying <laughs> like for someone like emma the mo most dangerous and and scary thing you can do to her is let her be vulnerable mm -hmm. so that that's what we're working but it's, it wouldn't be all the crazy stuff you know the the stuff that you know People would be like, oh my God, Emma. But it, it's that. It's uh, just, can we get her to be vulnerable? Because this is a broken girl. But we love her. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. Okay. I totally knew it. 
Then why didn't you say anything? Why didn't you say anything? When did we ever say anything? Like I was saying before is we're all always evolving as people and 100% after a whole season with Emma and then also having time to think about it, um, you come back in a little scared being like, is, is she still there? And we were kind of feeling that the first yeah. uh, you know, few days of shooting, like, are we gonna just fall back into it? And then you kind of just do. And then you're like, oh yeah, that's there. I know this person. And just the work and um, the time that you've spent with this character really does sit in there. And I think you guys felt that in the writer's oh. room too, being like, who are they? And then you're like, oh yeah, she would do that. No, she wouldn't do that. Or maybe she would, but we wouldn't expect it or whatever. So it's there. Sometimes having uh, us experience, so you know, we created the writers, we created this, and then we were seeing it uh, reflected back, you know, fully finished. Mm -hmm. Everyone started having different opinions of it. Like, well, Lynn would do that, Lynn would not, and it was crazy because it was that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It was that, you know, I guess it happens a lot second season when you're like, you doubt yourself, and then you sort of get in the groove and like, no, we got this, we know these people, we mm -hmm. created these people, you know. So, but yes, it, it, the first month we were like, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right. I am so excited about the show that we're building, but how we're building it is just as exciting. All right, let's roll sound. Quiet, please. My entire writer's room is Latinx. Half of it is queer. Our editors are all women. Our, our cinematographer is Latina. Our composer is a Latina. And when you build that way and you are writing a female story, you build it with a lot of brown females. There's no need for translation because you have that cultural shorthand. This is my first TV set, so I have nothing else to compare it to, but I would have uh, a friend visit or someone was on the lot. They'd come and say hi and we're always floored. They're like, I've never seen this before. This is incredible and this is insane. And I'm like, oh, this is weird. Like this feels so right and so normal. And for a show like ours, why wouldn't we have exactly what we have? So it is, for me, it's surprising of how much of an outlier it is. It shouldn't be. And I know you've had different experiences with being the only one and what that's like. So I think that was a big part of Tanya's um, real drive to make sure that the story was told right. And so when I'm on set and I have nothing else to compare it to, I'm like, this totally makes sense. What's, why, why, is, why, is, why is this a big deal? But it is, it's the a huge shorthand. deal. The shorthand. The cultural shorthand is so imperative. Our head of sound, he's Puerto Rican, mm -hmm. you know? Our, our, uh, our um, prop miss, uh, well, she doesn't like to call mistress. Our prop, prop master is a queer Chicana, you mm -hmm. know, queer Mexican. Like, that matters when, you, when you're crafting the thing and you know, like, because the sound, the way it sounds and the way it looks and the details, is, it, it matters, you know? So, because they have skin in the game. It looks a certain way, it's very insider. Um, the same thing. We have one of our uh, DPs is, is um, Latina. The other one is queer, and so we got skin in the game. So it, it's it's always going. It's it's built from the inside out. You know. This is Eddie. Eddie. She helped mommy run the bar and was like her roommate. Yeah. We actually talk a little bit about that yeah, in the we scene. Do. Um, it, and and we say it's a generalization. So <laughs> this is a generalization. So we're not. But this character has an opinion and thinks it's because um, we couple up <laughs> really Very fast, like homebody. You know, and, and like, and that we couple up really soon. I, I think it's cultural, uh, but also we haven't had access sometimes. Um, uh, female, femme, queer communities haven't had uh, also economic access in the same way. Uh, I know I, I'm from Chicago and um, Andersonville was very lesbian and, and uh, Boys Town was very, and, and it's, the, it, the difference is very, um, you could just tell, you know. So I, I, there's, we have an opinion, but I do, I'm not unwilling to say that that's why, you know. Uh, characters have opinion on the matter, but there's all sorts of queer. So I, 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 I don't know why they don't, ultimately I don't know why there's not more, like, lesbian bars. Yeah. In town there's lesbian nights. Yeah. You know, you could be like, okay, Tuesday night, that's a, whatever. Is yeah. that the, you know, but, the, but there's more, uh, you know, gay bars that are um, geared towards men. So I don't, I don't really know why, but we have opinions and we share them on the show. Yeah, and in the end, all you can do is speak from your own personal experience. No, no, none of us ever claim to have a blanket statement on behalf of all of our people. We speak from, uh, whether it's from the writers or whether it's from the way as, us as actors um, really discover these characters, it's from our personal experience, which is a Latinx queer experience. So 
that's you know that's that's as far as we can go with that yeah. and hopefully people hear that and see that and recognize it and do you have a writer's room that might disagree all the like lesbians in the writer's room disagreed on why and that's why there's you know, varied um, opinions on it. And how beautiful it is to see that on screen, yeah. see those discussions, see those disagreements, because you can only really do that when you have a writer's room full of queer people as opposed to the one person who's speaking on behalf of all queers. Yeah. Um, and I think that creates just something really special with the scenes. There was such a polemic and a debate <laughs> over uh, putting a condom, the condom on, 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 a vibrator. on a vibrator. Mm -hmm. And because I have a lot, I have married, mar married, um, lesbians and, and my writer team and it was uh, and then the single person is like well yeah that's how you know you're not going to reuse the sex there, toys no you know you're not going to get new sex toys for every time you know and that that conversation was like days and finally we have something you know we we deal with it but it's it's funny how that like putting a condom on a vibrator and like vibrator protocol of like, well, with an ex, you get rid of those vibrators and then you start sort of this crap. I'm like, but what about if you are just a single, single. person, you know? It, it was, it's great conversations because it's, because, <laughs> because it's, again, people have skin in the game and it's, they have stakes, you know? And it's that, those type of um, details that really tell a lot about the relationships between, between the characters. It doesn't need to be said, doesn't need to be, you know, so on the nose, but you just see that and if you recognize it, you're like, oh, they're not that serious yet, or, or they're, this is the point that they are in their relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's something really, really incredible about getting to, to use those.